Today I'm going to show you how to set up triple screens in iRacing. I'm going to show you my way, the quick way, and this works for me fine, so hopefully it'll work for you fine. Let's get straight to it. So we're going to open up our settings in iRacing. Going to come to our graphic settings, monitors, and it's all here. It's a really good system, and we're going to use it. So I use three flat screens. So that's what we're going to do, three flat screens. You can also use curved. Um, for curved, that is a much different way to measure your angles and distances so you can do it the same way there are other guides out there i don't have curved screens so i'm not going to get too into it i assume everything is pretty much the same you just need to find out the radius of curvature basically so if you look up your monitor look up what the radius of curvature is you will find a number like this there are different numbers they're not all the same so make sure you look that up but we're going to stick to three flat screens so to do this we're going to want to make sure that these are ticked. Render scene using three projections is what makes it kind of curve around you and not stay flat. Very important to have that ticked. Your monitor width. This is the size of your monitor from left to right, not excluding the plastic or the border or the bezel. That's what that's called is the bezel is the is the part around the monitor that doesn't show anything. So there may be plastic, but if you look closely on your monitor, on your monitor, there may also be a black part of the monitor that actually doesn't show pixels. You need to measure this with a measuring tape, but if you are wondering how it works and you have a measuring tape that does centimeters, basically in one centimeter, there's 10 millimeters. So basically put it up, keep it straight, and look at it straight on. If you look at an angle, it's gonna give you different kind of readings or measurements, so make sure you look straight on. Take your time and really think where it is. So now that you know your monitor width and your bezel width, we're gonna get onto what I think is the tough part, but a lot of people make a meal out of this and you start getting onto calculators online, triangle calcula calculators. You know, I'm not too bad with that stuff because I, I'm an electrician and we kind of had to deal with triangles. I'm not the best at maths at all, but we had to deal with triangles quite a lot because that's the way electricity is done. They're, they're phased out in weird directions, so it's easy to work with angles. But not a lot of people are really used to how all that works and trying to find an angle if you have two angles or one angle and you only know one length and all this sort of stuff. So how this works is you're going to find your angle. For me, it's 50 degrees. And the best way I think you can find your angle is by downloading an app on your phone that measures angles. There's going to be lots. There's going to be ones that you basically put up on a... You can place on a surface that's at an angle and it will tell you. You don't want a spirit level. You want something where you can take a photo. You can put the center point in between, right here, in between your monitors. And then you draw out two lines following the top of the monitors. So you take a top-down photo of your monitors. Make sure the phone is over the center point. The lens of the phone is over the center point as close as you can get it. Take the photo. Bring it down, place the center point where the two monitors meet, and then place point A as far as you can on the other to get a nice accurate reading, and then place point B as far as you can on the other monitor, and then after it'll tell you the angle you need. And the angle you want is the inside number. In most cases, it'll be the small number. So if you get an angle, let's say like 130 or something like that, or 140 or 125, that probably means you need to take that number away from 180 and then you'll get a result. So in my case, it was 50 degrees. So make sure you have a look on the Android store, the app store, if you're on iPhone, and find an app where you can take a picture of angles and you'll be sorted. I don't know what the app is because I did it a long time ago. I tried to look for it. It's not really there at the moment, but there are so many apps. So the fact that I use my phone as a webcam doesn't really help. So trust me, you'll be able to do it. If you're doing maths or if you're doing other stuff, you might have one of those protractors. So give that a crack. Once you have your angle, you bang it in here. The last part we need to do is the viewing distance. Viewing distance is measured quite easily. It's measured from here, your eyeball, I guess, the, your, the, bridge of, the bridge of your nose, out to your monitor. Make sure your head is in a natural position, not too far back, not too far forward. Measure from here all the way to the center. For me, it's 650 millimeters, 65 centimeters. You press compute and then it will give you your field of view. Now, I've been using a larger field of view for quite a while, and there's a weird reason for that, because I like it. <laughs> this is gonna sound weird. So there's a lot of people that will say, whatever field of view you get, you have to use. And that's true, but for the Daytona 500, uh, or the Daytona, the 24 hours of Daytona I did, um, when was it, in January, the car I was using had ABS lights, 
and I wanted those lights on the center screen. And for some reason, I was faster with this FOV than I was with the calculated FOV. Now, to be honest, I'm probably going to try work back to the FOV I'm meant to have. And I have moved things a bit, so I probably need to redo all these calculations for myself. It's pretty much accurate, though, to the way it was. The monitors haven't changed. It's just my distance has increased a tiny little bit. Maybe the angles have moved, but the way my monitor mount is set up, they always move. It's not, like, rigid, rigid. So, nothing's perfect with FOV. There's a video, great video out there explaining why FOV shouldn't be perfect. There are some faults. Uh, someone went into a lot detail, a lot more detail in this, than, than in this video, and a lot more detail than I'd care to do, to be honest. So, I just like to get it working. This is the way you do it. Monitor width, bezel width, measure your angle. You can do that anyway, or you can get a simple app. Your viewing distance, press compute, and then bang, it'll just sort it all out. Now, the last part, so this is how we do our FOV, how to set it up. There's a lot of ways you can set up these in iRacing. The best way is to come into options, go to graphics, turn off full screen, turn off border mode. That means you can be in full screen mode. You can easily tab out without your computer having to like take a break or some, some crap like that. And what we need to do is come to our documents, our iRacing documents. Here it is here. Hold on a second. Okay, and we're gonna come down to our render DX11 monitor. We're gonna open up this file and we're gonna scroll down until we see, do, 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 do. here. Here is the best way to do it. Nvidia surround, if you really wanna do it, fire away, but it turns all three of your monitors into one monitor. When you open programs, it opens across three monitors and makes your computer almost unusable. I really, really dislike it. So some games you're forced to do it. With iRacing, with this, you don't need to do it. So you need to measure out what your monitor sizes are. So I use 1920 by 1080. And obviously, uh, 1920 multiplied by 3 gets us this number. So I'm using 1920, 1920, 1920. And 1080 is the height. So... Um, let me show you height stays the same 1080 when you come in here it's gonna look different but this is how it looks for me now you're going to change your windowed X position to minus your monitor width so what that's gonna do is it's gonna shift the start of this render over to the left very important and once it's shift over to the left that means it's gonna start correctly your windowed width is going to be your monitor width multiplied by three. So in this case, it's 5760. So if you have triple screen monitors, you'd be familiar with like if you're trying to download a wallpaper, you're looking for 5760 by 1920, that kind of big rectangle resolution. And windowed height is going to stay at 1080. You're going to save this and you're going to come back into your game. Obviously, you'll close all this out before you do anything here and it'll work straight away this saves in your monitor file so when you open up iRacing which i'll show you here up at the top of the screen you can start your game in multiple different ways and this is our monitor mode so every time you open this it's going to open up the settings that you've set and it will start with three screens on the go your resolution will be correct up here and um sorry 5760 by 1080 that's a correction sorry i said the width there that was wrong just before someone's probably mid typing there calling me out and uh, yeah that's pretty much everything so now what we're going to do is we're going to set up our camera in game before i forget this is an important part but also you don't have to do it because everything we've done has set up everything correctly um i really apologize for this view this is the only way i can show you directly what three monitors look like you will actually notice a bit of curving so the monitor is moved outwards towards the sides that's because my monitors are closer for me so that's what the render three screens projections does so if you were to take that image cut it and bend it in it would then be a flat dash so for me it looks like the dashboard just continues the whole way out everything looks like where it should be the mirror is almost like it, it's just really where it should be now if you feel like you're too close or you want to move back what we're going to do is i'll show you now i'm going to have to flick around through some stuff here so I'm going to turn off our this game capture. I'm just going to... I can actually leave it here. No, I can leave it here and you can kind of get a feel for it. So we're going to come to our camera. 
Make sure we're in cockpit mode. We're going to press control F12, brings up the camera settings. And the offset X button, that's what we need, the offset X. This controls how far forward or backwards you're sitting. And this actually works in game. So we can move back, we can move forward. And basically it's like your seating position. So we're going to, let's say, click it back to 100. What you want to do is you want to save car and we'll call it um, 100 setting car. We'll save it. And then that way, every time you come in this car, this seating position will always be set. So as you can see, it moved everything back and we could see a bit more on the left and right. So I'll play around with it now. I'll pop it open just so I can see. Yes, so you can see things moving around. You can see quite a lot more. And, oh, very nice, Jack. I wanted to come into a session to register for the race, to register for practice, but I joined the race. So guess who's doing a Mazda race? This dickhead. <laughs> but um, yeah, fortunately enough, we're just finished the video. That's how you set your FOV. And when you go in game, you have settings to increase your driver height. Like this, you have your shift horizon. And the easiest way to do this is to look straight and flat. And you get this red line right where your eyes meet the monitor completely level. That's very simple. And once your shift horizon is set, then you can customize your driver height and your seating position this way. You can go up and you can also tilt. That's all you need to have the perfect three screen monitor setup in iRacing. Do your FOV, set up, set up the monitor file in the documents, and then just customize your camera, um, your camera settings and save them to get the correct way, uh, the correct settings that you want. But yeah, if you enjoyed the guide, leave a like, consider subscribing if it helped you. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions or need any help, pop it down in the comments below. I'll get back to you at some point and hopefully I can give you a hand then. So uh, yeah, thanks very much for watching.